But the main reason why I'm discontinuing this raloxifene experiment now, even though I was getting good results, and I'm sure with prolonged exposure at 120 milligrams raloxifene per day, the gynecomastia tissue would get less and less and less and less, albeit that it will never completely uh, dissolve into nothingness and disappear um, like it's some sort of magic compound. The reason why I'm discontinuing raloxifene is because it's linked to serious blood clots. Vigor Steve here with a final update on my raloxifene experiment, an experiment that I've been running for approximately 12 weeks, eight weeks on 60 milligrams raloxifene, and four weeks after that on 120 milligrams raloxifene per day in an attempt to shrink or completely remove the gynecomastia which I had since the age of 24. Now for me, my gynecomastia first developed after I had a motorcycle accident where I was bedridden for a couple weeks. And then as I started going back to the gym and became a little bit more mobile, one day I woke up with puffy nipples, very sensitive, and I checked and I had gyno. And I've never touched a steroid up until that point. I started taking steroids at the age of 26, but somehow I developed gynecomastia after my motorcycle accident. And I'm still not exactly sure why that is due to a prolonged period of inactivity or gaining some body fat in the process and getting a lot of aromatization. Or maybe due to some of the medications which were prescribed after the surgery or administered during surgery to put me under. And I'm not exactly sure because I was in a holiday at that time and blood work is not as easy to come by as it is here in Thailand. So that's where I first developed my gynecomastia. And then through some experimentation trials with testosterone and nandrolone or trembolone, right, the surging of prolactin, the gynecomastia got worse. Now I've abstained from trembolone for over seven years, did a short stint of a nandrolone only cycle, which did not exacerbate the gynecomastia, which is present. So even though my gynecomastia is about 14 years old, right, with this 12 week raloxifene experiment, so let me just give you guys the spoilers. I was able to shrink my gyno in half, judging by the caliper readings that I took before the raloxifene experiment and at the end of it and a week later, because I wanted to see if there was any negative rebound after discontinuing raloxifene and allowing estrogens to attach to the estrogen alpha and beta receptors of the breast tissue. Again, right, I've been blocking those receptors for 12 weeks with raloxifene, so I wanted to see if there was a rebound and I had to wait for the IGF-1 results, which always take a little bit longer to get back. So I did my blood work on November 14th. And now we're finally here, we're going to discuss everything. Now I took before, during and after pictures, but in every picture, you don't really see the difference. So we're just going to go with my anecdotal reports of what has changed cosmetically, what I see in the mirror, when I'm wearing a shirt in a hot area or a cold area, and when I did the good old pinching maneuver, right, checking how thick or how thin or how small the gynecomastia was getting over the duration of this experiment. No twisting, of course, because twisting causes inflammation and that it's very hard to track progress, is it not? I'll put up some progress pictures on the screen, my latest progress pictures from November 14th, where it's very unnoticeable, this gynecomastia, which has been shrinking over the last couple of weeks. Um, but in my opinion, it is more noticeable because I felt, and as I mentioned in a couple of previous uh, cycle update videos, is that the raloxifene was helping me shed fat off my lower chest, which is always a little bit of a problem area for me. Now, I also have a little bit of stubborn body fat on my quads, which in this case, after 12 weeks on 60 milligrams to 120 milligrams raloxifene per day, I noticed that the fat off my chest was going away much faster compared to the fat on my legs. And previously, when I would do diets and I wanted to get as lean as possible, towards the end of the diet, when I noticed a little bit of stubborn body fat on my legs that it was not going away, I would deploy maybe 20 milligrams, 40 milligrams of tamoxifen, Novodex, which is known to help to preferentially lose stubborn body fat off the lower body, whether that's for men or women. Novodex is deployed at the end when the skin is still a little bit thick and that stubborn body fat seems to not be able to go away otherwise. Now, in this case, when using raloxifene, I noticed that the fat on my legs would kind of stay and linger, not go away, which is honestly frustrating. But on a positive note, the fat of my chest was going away more preferentially compared to other body parts. So I noticed that my upper body was getting uniformly lean 
And as the gynecomastia was shrinking, even though the gynecomastia was getting smaller, the fat was going away at a much accelerated rate, causing the gynecomastia to become more noticeable. So I see in my abs and thighs shots that I have a little bit of outline on the gynecomastia over my chest, whereas I did not have that before because the fat was kind of masking that. So now I've come to the point where I know that I would be able to continue with the raloxifene experiment if I wanted to, but I know that at one point I need to do surgery to really make it look cosmetically pleasing because I feel that the fat is going away at a much faster rate and I'm very sure that the raloxifene can only shrink but not completely remove the gyno even with prolonged exposure at higher dosages. And it's just purely judging from people who contacted me over the last couple of weeks regarding the results of their raloxifene experiments. And everybody says uniformly the same thing. Raloxifene worked up until a certain point. It was able to shrink my gyno, whether that's pubescent gyno or old gyno or gyno that is just formed recently. And in that case, it might still be able to shrink the gynecomastia to a point it's completely unnoticeable, even at very low body fat levels. But for most guys that had lingering gyno for years or decades, it shrinks it up until a certain point, and then a remainder is left behind, which needs to be addressed with surgery. Now, I've already consulted with two surgeons who are specialized in reconstructive surgery in cases of breast cancer in women, where the breast cancer had to be surgically removed after which reconstructive surgery is required, whether that's plastic surgery or a breast augmentation, right? Those, those surgeons are specialized in those particular cases. And the reason why I'm going with surgeons specialized in reconstructive surgery and not a surgeon specialized in gynecomastia surgery is that, well, they're also familiar with gynecomastia surgery because I've talked with several of their patients who hired them specifically for gynecomastia surgery is because in my case, the gynecomastia has a little bit of, um, goes into the surrounding tissue, so to say. And because I have some fat on my lower chest that is very stubborn and hard to remove, I'll probably need a little bit of liposuction and a cosmetic surgery in place to make it look cosmetically appealing and not have this nipple concave inwards um, unless I go into a very hard, um, hardcore diet where I end up at 4%, 6% body fat to really remove all of the fat. Uh, but that's a trajectory of um, hunger and suffering that at this point in time, I can't really undergo anymore because I'm so busy with business. So yeah, I know exactly what you guys are going to say. Steve, you should suffer your way through it and get rid of the fat that way. But at this point in time with my business, I can't afford two or three months of hardcore suffering where I'm a moody son of a bitch. Um, I'd rather get rid of it with surgery. So that's probably going to occur in March of next year when I intend to come off cycle again, remove the plate from my leg, which I had put in place 14 years ago when I had my motorcycle accident. And up until now, I have been procrastinating to get that metal plate removed. So I'll do all of that at the same time, somewhere around March next year. I'll be completely immobilized. I'll lose all of my gains again. But as you guys saw from this um, cycle duration that we're now at week 18 or so, um, I'm able to restore most of my gains reasonably fast. Let's go over the caliper readings, which I took before starting this raloxifene experiment, during, after, and then one week later. And so far, it's been a steady progression of shrinkage, even after discontinuing the raloxifene. I started this experiment on August 22nd, week six of the cycle, after a one week fast. At that time, the right side of the gynecomastia was 21 millimeters, so that's quite thick on the caliper readings. Right side was 21 millimeters and the left side was 17 millimeters. Then after eight weeks on 60 milligrams raloxifene per day, dosing that at 30 milligrams in the morning and 30 milligrams in the evening. So that's week 14 of the cycle on October 17th. My gynecomastia on the right side shrunk from 21 millimeters to 18 millimeters. And on the left side, it shrank from 17 millimeters to 15 millimeters. So over an eight week period, it shrank with approximately two to three millimeters per side. Not that significant, not that noticeable. Then after that, I increased the dose of raloxifene from 60 milligrams per day to 120 milligrams per day, 60 milligrams in the morning and 60 milligrams in the evening. After four weeks on that protocol, I noticed a significant improvement in the reduction of the gynecomastia tissue, as well as the fat mass on my lower chest. 
So the measurements on the right side went from 18 millimeters over a short window of time, four weeks, down to 12 millimeters. That six millimeter reduction in half the time on double the dose. And it went down from 21 to 18 millimeters in eight weeks on 60 milligrams. But by doubling the dose on half the time, the shrinkage was doubled from 18 millimeters to 12 millimeters. And the same can be said for the left side, from 17 millimeters to 15 millimeters, and then ending up at 11 millimeters. So that's a significant reduction on 120 milligrams raloxifene per day. Now, again, is that all gynecomastia tissue? The solidified gynecomastia tissue that has been there for years? Probably not. I think a portion of that reduction on the caliper measurements is fat. And I noticed that my fat mass was coming down quite significantly as well. So maybe a couple millimeters of the reduction is from the fat, right? My diet was continuing. I was doing my daily cardio. I was in a caloric restrictive state. And it's a little bit hard to pinpoint how much of that is the actual gyno tissue and how much of that is extra size that is coming down by removing the body fat that is present in the lower chest area. But I will say this, now that I've discontinued the raloxifene from November 14th onwards, right, at week 18 of my cycle, now that we're 10 days later on November 24th, week 19 of the cycle, I still lost one extra millimeter on both the left and the right side. So now on the right side, measuring the gynecomastia tissue, it's 11 millimeters, a little bit over a centimeter. And on the left side, it's 10 millimeters at one centimeter. So it's a significant reduction over the period of 12 weeks, 13 weeks, I went from an average of, let's say, 20 millimeters to an average of 10, 11 millimeters. So that's a reduction of half. Now, again, that's part fat tissue, that's part gynecomastia tissue. But judging by the rate of progression, when doubling the dose of raloxifene, if I were ever to do this experiment again, I would go straight to 120 milligrams raloxifene per day, dose 60 milligrams morning and 60 milligrams evening, because that seems to be the sweet spot for me and most of the people that I've talked to. 60 milligrams raloxifene per day offers some relief, so to say, but 120 milligrams raloxifene per day seems to be the dose that gives you much more pronounced results. So if I, again, if I were ever to do this experiment again, I would start with 120 milligrams raloxifene and run that for three months straight. Now, I don't expect much shrinkage after this. I will still discontinue the experiment because I noticed that my liver enzymes were going up and my IGF-1 levels were coming down. And, well, I'm trying to keep my liver health as intact as possible. So we'll go over the blood work after this. But the main reason why I'm discontinuing this raloxifene experiment now, even though I was getting good results, and I'm sure with prolonged exposure at 120 milligrams raloxifene per day, the gynecomastia tissue would get less and less and less and less, albeit that it will never completely uh, dissolve into nothingness and disappear um, like it's some sort of magic compound. The reason why I'm discontinuing raloxifene is because it's linked to serious blood clots. And in this day and age, um, I'm not going to take any risks. So for the guys who are thinking about doing a raloxifene experiment now, right, after watching this video or you're midway through your uh, raloxifene experiment in an attempt to shrink your gynecomastia to... Um, the levels where it's almost undetectable or completely gone, right? Assuming you're using raloxifene right when the gynecomastia tissue was forming, in which case it might still offer some benefit and relief in shrinking the gynecomastia tissue completely. So guys, please keep it in mind that due to the activation of the estrogen receptors in the liver, raloxifene and other selective estrogen receptor modulators have a pro-coagulatory effect by decreasing the levels of fibrinogen in the bloodstream or influencing levels of other coagulation factors as well. And if for these reasons, raloxifene and serums increase the risk of thrombosis. Now, this might be in very rare and unique cases. Now, I was already aware of this before I started my raloxifene experiment 13 weeks ago, and that's why I've been frantically checking my D-dimer levels in the meantime, just to make sure there's no risk of a blood clot forming. Before the experiment, I also checked my pro-thrombin time, my thrombin time, my partial thromboplasmin time, my anti-thrombin-3 activity, my protein-C activity, my protein-S activity, as well as my fibrinogen level and the factor V Leiden percentage. Now, all of these blood work markers came back within normal parameters. I discussed the results with a hematologist 
the CFA was at risk of forming blood clots while using serms or during the times that we live in. And well, luckily, uh, they were able to inform me that I was not at risk with these uh, blood work results. So I did as many tests as I could. Still, I don't want to continue this experiment with the increased risk of clotting-related issues. And to be fair, I didn't do a 23andMe regarding specific SMPs for clotting polymorphisms. So I did as many tests as I could. I'm still waiting for the results of my 23andMe, which I did not have at the start of this experiment. And up until now, I still don't have those results. So if you're thinking about running this Roloxifen experiment for yourself, and you're going straight to 120 milligrams per day because you want to shrink that gynecomastia as soon as possible or maybe completely make it to magically disappear, please check these blood work markers. You need to check your clotting factors, all of them, through blood work. And if you can, with a 23andMe genetic analysis, to see if you have a specific SMPs related to clotting polymorphisms. Just to make sure that you're not entering this experiment, increasing your risk for deep vein thrombosis or stroke or a heart attack or other health issues that might come from blood clots. If you fall into a category where you're at an increased risk, just postpone the raloxifene and postpone the surgery as well because... Well, there's very rare instances where surgeries lead to blood clots also, right? So it's just the same of the time. You need to be super careful regarding your health. And well, the gynecomastia and the cosmetic uh, appeal can wait, can wait until this whole situation is resolved, which, well, who knows how long that's going to take. Let's get into my blood work results. Um, it's not a vigorous Steve video without blood work results. So I did my blood work <laughs> before during and after, but we'll just limit it to the liver-related markers because those seems to be the most measurable when running a raloxifene experiment, right? besides the clotting factors, which I tested before the raloxifene experiment but did not retest. I only tested the liver-related markers multiple times during this experiment. At the start, my AST was 45 units per liter and my ALT was 40 units per liter, so already close to the top of the expected reference range for liver enzymes. And again, there's a multitude of factors which can increase liver enzyme concentrations besides strenuous workouts, leaking a little bit of these uh, amino transferases into the bloodstream following uh, heavy hypertrophy work. Um, some of the supplements that I was using, some of the other oral performance enhancing drugs that I was taking, or some of the injectables which might end up metabolizing through the liver, raising liver enzyme concentrations in the bloodstream as well. So a lot of overlapping factors. But during this period of the raloxifene experiment, after eight weeks on 60 milligrams per day, my liver enzymes increased the AST from 45 to 71 units per liter and the ALT from 40 to 58 units per liter. And then another four weeks on 120 milligrams uh, raloxifene per day, my liver enzymes increased the AST from 71 to 78 units per liter and the ALT from 58 to 62 units per liter. Another reason why I want to discontinue this experiment, because again, I want to keep these liver enzymes to the top of the reference range, uh, the highest. And I had an, a bout with non-alcoholic fatty liver disease. And I always saw my liver enzymes, you know, fluctuate between 50 to 100 units per liter. And I'm really trying to keep my eye on it. So going forward, at least for the next four weeks, six weeks, when I expect to do blood work again, because well, that's like a monthly affair for me, right? I go in for blood work to make some adjustments um, to keep my health as intact as possible while using performance enhancing drugs. So I'm going to discontinue anything oral, right? No 5-amino-1-MQ. I'm not going to reintroduce that. No um, injectable peptides for now, besides the peptides that I was already running, the ACG and the GHK copper. And I'll put the full protocol on the screen for the next six weeks, uh, which is not going to change much. So I'm going to discontinue anything that is passing through the liver besides um, health-related supplements or no oral performance-enhancing drugs because I want these liver enzymes to come down and stay maximally at the top of the reference range while still training my socks off in the gym. Right? I don't want them to end up too high because that right, eventually might cause this non-alcoholic fatty liver disease to return. Um, and if I can't control these liver enzymes, then... Oh, the most logical thing for me is just to go in for another fibro scan to see if um, any fatty tissue is building up in the liver, which I'm certainly trying to prevent going forward. 
Now, my gamma GT levels did not really change during this experiment. So there were 11 at the start, 13 units per liter after eight weeks on 60 milligrams raloxifene, and then came back down to 12 units per liter after another four weeks on 120 milligrams raloxifene per day. I did not check my IGF-1 at baseline. Generally, on a comparable protocol without growth hormone in the picture, my IGF-1 levels fluctuate between 150 to 200 nanograms per milliliter. But after 13 weeks on raloxifene, ending up at 120 milligrams per day, my IGF-1 came down to 110 nanograms per milliliter. Not as bad as two weeks on 500 milligrams metformin before bed, which drops my IGF-1 to like 80 nanograms per milliliter, and that I certainly feel regarding recovery. Um, I did notice that increasing raloxifene from 60 milligrams to 120 milligrams per day impaired my recovery to a certain extent. It did not make me any less strong. It did not um, mitigate some of the pump right, that I would have. I didn't notice a significant reduction in nutrient partitioning or nutrient uptake as my IGF-1 levels certainly declined over that time that I was running a raloxifene, especially at 120 milligrams per day, I just noted that my recovery was um, getting less, right? And I felt that I was not as recovered by the next workout as previous. Now, again, I'm getting stronger. I'm, I'm still in caloric restrictive states. I will say that after discontinuing the raloxifene within a couple days, I already noticed that I was getting fuller and that I was having a better performance at the gym. So, it's a little bit of anecdotal reports without doing additional blood work uh, 10 days after um, discontinuing the raloxifene. Just something that I've noticed, right? I feel a little bit fuller, a little bit uh, better recovery capability, even though my diet has not changed. And right, my, my pharmacology regarding the entire PED protocol has not changed besides removing the raloxifene. So that's something of note. So I'll retest my um, liver enzymes, my IGF-1, a couple of weeks from now to see if that's bounced back um, to acceptable levels, right? My IGF-1 goes up and my liver enzymes go down, hopefully. And then we'll make some changes if that's required. For now, I'm getting great results. I don't see a reason to increase or change anything to this protocol. And I'm pretty much as muscular as I want to be. Uh, all I need to do is lose a little bit more body fat, which is slowly and steadily happening. I think I want to lose another two or three kilos on the scale, and then I'll be happy. I'm hovering around 102 kilos, and I and seem to stay at around 102 kilos, even though I increased or doubled my steroids. My weight did not jump up that much. So I was 100 kilos when I increased from 286 milligrams anabolics per week to 608 milligrams anabolics per week. So I only gained two or three kilos on the scale, but I got significantly leaner in the meantime. I think that pretty much covers this raloxifene experiment. Again, I'm going to discontinue it and I will not reintroduce that going forward because I'm a little bit scared of this uh, clotting uh, related issues that seem to be going around. So I don't want to um, exacerbate anything that could potentially be present or could potentially get worse due to the situation that we live in nowadays. Um, I want my liver enzymes to come back down again. I will retest my blood work a couple weeks from now. For now, my overall conclusion is that raloxifene works up until a certain extent. It will not completely disappear gynecomastia that is there for years or decades. But I have seen anecdotal reports of people that were able to completely shrink their gynecomastia if they caught it early enough. So let's say you're on your testosterone cycle, you add in the nandrolone because that's um, what you uh, read on the internet that you should add some nandrolone in for gains, right? You're a little bit inexperienced um, and you added the nandrolone and suddenly you get all this progestogenic activity and your prolactin goes high. Maybe you're smoking a little bit of weed on the side and right? you get into this uh, gynecomastia heaven territory. In that case, through your own doing, <laughs> where you're uh, inducing gynecomastia yourself, right, due to poor uh, choices, raloxifene will certainly help if you discontinue the progestogenic 19 nor and keep your prolactin under control. Because again, raloxifene is blocking the estrogen receptors, not the progesterone receptors, and not the prolactin receptors. So you still need to be proactive and make sure that you discontinue whatever compound that you're running that potentiates their effects through other receptors that the raloxifene is blocking. So let's say you got, uh, you're on a, a gram of test without an AI and your estrogen is sky high, 
and you notice a little bit of gynecomastia tissue forming and your prolactin is a little bit elevated because your estrogen is so high. Yeah, in those cases, if you catch it early enough, I'm sure raloxifene is going to help significantly, allowing you to make the appropriate adjustments, get your estrogen levels under control, and not get um, your gynecomastia into a, a situation where it starts growing and accumulating tissue that you need to remove with surgery. But if you have old gynecomastia tissue, it might be able to shrink it by half. That seems to be the general consensus with most people that I've talked to over the last couple of weeks. Raloxifene is able to shrink the gyno approximately by half. And if you want more shrinkage um, after that, surgery. Surgery is the only option to really remove all of the gynecomastia tissue that is present. And then, well, in my case, I may need some plastic surgery to remove some of the surrounding fat mass um, because I don't think I'm going to get into a position where um, I can just uh, right humble down and pedal to the middle and uh, get myself to 4% body fat um, and be a grumpy son of a bitch <laughs> the entire way through. And well, let's be honest, most of the time you get a little, a little bit of a rebound and then that fat mass just comes back and then the, the nipple might still concave. So I'll leave that up to the surgeon which specialized in reconstructive surgery I will document all of that uh, somewhere in March or April next year. I will take you along that ride of uh, surgery. For educational and informative purposes, hopefully we can make it slightly entertaining as well. Stay tuned for that, right? If you're not subscribed, now would be a good time to do so, so you can watch that video as soon as it drops early next year. And I'll leave it at that, guys. Thank you so much for watching. If you're looking for the most comprehensive guides to bodybuilding pharmacology, you can find the ebooks at my website, vigorsteve.com slash shop. Direct link down below in the description section. Have a look at my link tree with all the sponsors and affiliates that I'm associated with and I believe in. If you're looking for personalized advice, you can always schedule a consultation. You can find the rates in the consultation section. Follow me on Instagram at vigorsteve as well as TikTok at vigorsteve. Vigorous crew, a frontal bicep with this much gyno, right? That's as much gyno as you're going to see. About a centimeter here and a centimeter there. It's not too bad, but yeah, at one point I'll get that shit cut out and take you guys along that journey of recovery. Vigor Screw, you guys know what to do. Thank you guys so much for watching and I'll see you in the next video.